Hi everybody, my name's Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. Hmm. You know, so much lately, it just feels like, like all of us, all of us together, uh, with no separation, no barriers, nothing between us, except we have together the opportunity to share love, and we op have an opportunity to, to do something on this planet that, whether it was ever a Garden of Eden back, back when, we don't know for sure, but we know in our hearts that we can make a Garden of Eden again. You know, when we were setting up here, there were two little children of, of tonight's guest, and, you know, they're young in earth years, and they're so clean and pure and, and joyous. And then, like, like all of us were in a certain way, and then we grow up, and then we grow up into separation. We grow up into separate countries and separate religions. These two kids didn't know that. They don't know that. And their purity is what we can experience in any age, in any supposed religion, in any supposed country. And that is our gift, and that is our blessing, and that is our joy, and that is our destiny, and that is our opportunity now to come together as one. I mean, if, if you've watched the bridging shows before, and I know most of you have, you know we talk about dedicated to the oneness, dedicated to the experience where there is no separation in, in any true sense. And the things that seemingly separate us, like countries and religions and heights and weights and ages and sexual preferences and political views are so small to the reality of our connectedness and our love and our oneness and our, our souls that in essence that's the, the illusion and the delusion of, of humans on this earth until now. And now is our opportunity to to go beyond that, to reach into that within inside that we all have and to recognize our unconditional love, our oneness, that the Father, the Goddess, and I are one. And when we do that, we can be childlike, we can rem remain pure, and we can bring children into this world who don't have to experience the, the the devastation and the fear and the pestilence and the war that separation brings. And that is our gift and that is our opportunity now. And we know that it's time for us to take it. It's time for us to know that. It's time for us to act on that. That our time here on earth is to feel love and share it, to, to reach out over and over unrelentingly into that heart of hearts, into that love of loves that we all are. And tonight's guest, that's his calling, that's his destiny, that's his service, that's his play, that's his work. Yuval Ron is an inspirational musician, he's a peace activist, he's an international composer and record producer, and his real intent is to create musical bridges between people of, of all faiths. He's a noted lecturer and leader of workshops and master classes all over the world. And you'll see two videos of his tonight. And the first one called Gift of, uh, I think it's called The Gift. And that will explain his work, his play, his passion. And you'll see how his music and how his ensemble are examples of that coming together. Where people of all different warring or at, at opposition, countries play together collaboratively, beautifully, harmoniously, creatively, lovingly. And that is our, collectively, as humans on this planet, that is our, it is our time for that, and it is our destiny. And it's way overdue, and it's way time right now. And I know the feeling is out there. The feeling is spreading. The feeling of our connection, the feeling of our love, the feeling of no barriers. 
Love doesn't have barriers, does, does, doesn't have countries, love doesn't have religion. Love is an internal experience of who we are. So uh, we'll show two videos of Yuval and his music and you know, him talking about his intention and his destiny and you know, why he's doing what he's doing and, and some of his extraordinary music. And as most of you know, we're also in the middle of an extraordinary international healing art project that came as a vision, it came as a dream to reach out to the world and say, join us. Join us in this healing. Join us in this reconnection. Join us as an acupuncture for the planet. That anybody who wants to, any skill level, any age, produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth. Any format, any size, a glass, acrylics, oils, collages, jewelry, sculpture, anything that manifests through you with the intention of bridging heaven and earth, with that concept in mind. And we've received 250 probably some odd pieces all up from all over the planet. Unbelievable pieces. Really, if you, if you ever want to be inspired, go to heaventoearthart.com, heaventoearthart.com, and just flip through each artist page, one after the other, 250 from all over the globe, and see all these different types of manifestations, all these different flowers of the garden. So powerful, so beautiful. S such an intention of love. And tonight we have two beautiful pieces from Ariel uh, Ali and John Longbreak. One's a photograph, one is a digital art, and just all different kinds, all different expressions of that connection, of that love, of that intention to be part of a healing, of a creativity, of a collaboration. And that's what we're here to do as a species. So join me in a short meditation, then you'll see the first uh, Yuval uh, video. Okay, so the first video is uh, Yuval Ron. It's, ca it's called The Gift, and it's a beautiful introduction to Yuval, his music, his service, as an intention. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Christian musicians and dancers in order to create harmony 
in order to bring out beauty, in order to inspire people to see the unifying force which is in all these traditions of the Middle East. prayer. These are part of the ecstatic journey that we take in our concert and we do it in order to leave behind the illusion of separation, that feeling that there is us and there is them and the two are separated one from another because in truth we are all connected. The mystics know it and now modern science is confirming that we are all dependent on each other. We are all one. of Andalusia, this old music, we present in a new way. We bring in some flamenco music influences, some orchestral influences, some Moroccan trance influences, and by that we breathe new life and we energize this old beautiful music of the Jews of Spain.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video. So we'll have a chance to talk to Yuval about all his work and service and everything. And the incredible piece of art you're seeing in between uh, Yuval and I is by Ariel Ali, uh, Bridging Heaven. Uh, it's digital art. He's an extraordinary artist, uh, activist, peace healer from Malibu, California, who does art all over the world and his Go to his website, Google uh, E R I A L A L I, and you'll see just extraordinary art and, and sensibility and intention. So, Ariel. Uh, okay, so, wow, great to have yes, you here. Yes, thank you, Alan. It's good to be here. Yeah, you too. So, the audience has already seen the gift, so they have yes. a feel for you know how how and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. But how did you come to really make that connection that you wanted to use music as a bridge between heaven and earth, yes. as it were? You know, it started in 2000, and at the time I was in Los Angeles composing music for films and television, and I had my life set and, and sought out, and, and I was happy doing what I do. And my personal life was fine. I had uh, met my wife and, and established a family. And, and then I start hearing in the news every morning about the bloodshed in the Middle East. And that's where I came from. That's, yeah, you grew up in Israel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I was born and raised in Israel. And, and at that time, in 2000, there was the second uprising of the Palestinians. And there was bloodshed and, and, and riots in the streets in Israel and in Palestine. And every morning I would wake up to hear the news about bloodshed in Israel and Palestine. Both sides, you know, he, he, killing each other and, and innocent people getting caught in the, in the, in the uh, violence. And, and, and it really got to me. It started to bother me and disturb me. Every morning I felt I wish today... I will not hear any news about the Middle East, or about Israel or Palestine. One day, can I have one day without news about violence and bloodshed? And every day it would reoccur, and I f start feeling a need to do something about it. And I felt there's nothing I can do. I have no power. I, I cannot change the policies of the, what the politicians make and the choices that the politicians um, take. And... Uh, and I thought, what can I do? What, what do I know? What, what, what is the power that I have as, in, as an individual musician, composer? And I thought about all the research that I've done for 20 years. I've researched the sacred music of the three Abrahamic traditions of the Middle East. And I've done it for my own sake as a composer, to enrich myself in order to be able to compose music. And I studied the, the music of the Jewish people of the Middle East and the Christian people of the Middle East and the Muslim people of the Middle East. And I, I haven't shared that with the public. I just used it for my own research. And I thought, since I know how similar the sacred music, the prayers are similar, there's similar root. elements in text, yeah, yeah, similar root. roots, right. and the music is similar. And I felt, you know, that is one thing that I could do. If I could bring three musicians from those three traditions on stage to perform these three traditions that now are completely inflamed in the Middle East. If we could show pe the people that musicians can come together and create harmony on stage, that would be the one thing that I could do, just to counter the violence out in the streets. And we decided to do one concert in 2000 in Santa Monica in California, and it was called Yuval Ron and Friends. It was not the Yuval Ron Ensemble. We didn't know we were going to do this for years. We thought we were going to do just one time concert. And a good friend of mine, Ruth Goodman, who's a, a, a movement therapist who lives in Venice, California, she pushed me to do it. She really encouraged, encouraged me to do that. And she took on to produce the, the, the concert. And I brought in musicians that I knew f from Los Angeles area who came from Syria, from Lebanon, from Palestine, from Israel. And I just gathered them and I said, you know, let's do it. Uh, let's go and do one time concert just to show people that there's another way. There's a way to create beauty by bringing those people from opposing camps. And we did the concert and it was sold out. It was packed 
the second half of the concert, um, the first part, people were sitting on, on the ground and listening. And then the second half, people just started dancing. And the whole audience stood up and started dancing. And it was such a great feeling of harmony and beauty. And you played music from all these three traditions yeah. as part of it. Yeah. yeah, we played sacred music from the Jews of the Middle East. We played sacred music from the Muslims and the Christians of the Middle East together. And after that show, uh, the musicians asked me if we could continue to just get together and play. And I said, yeah, let, let's do it. Let's meet every Monday and just play. And I thought it's just going to be like a gathering for ourselves. And uh, we wanted to experience that experience again for our own sake. And then people asked us to perform again. We got invitations, you know, come and perform in this yoga studio, come and play in this festival. And, and it became, slowly, half of my career. You know, I used to do just music for films and television and, and theater and dance. I, I used to just work as a composer. And now this new mission that, that took over my life became at least 50% of my work, producing albums, performing concerts around the world, teaching, giving many master classes around uh, all over the world, in universities and colleges, in uh, preschools, nursery homes, uh, uh, high schools, e everywhere, all ages. And we go and we teach about the history of the music. And I use the, 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 what I know about the music, I use that as a metaphor to teach, especially young people, how our origin is one and our potential to create beauty and harmony stems from the fact that we are coming from one, one root. And that's something that we forgot, people forgot. And the beauty about music is that I can demonstrate it with music. It's not just talk, it's not just a, a, a nice intellectual idea. It's not just a poem, a poem, a beautiful poem about that. He, with music, I can demonstrate with, with sounds how what people pray comes from the same musical building block. And people have forgotten it. They feel, oh, that's my prayer. That, this is a very sacred prayer of my people. And then when you show them that their sacred prayer is similar to another sacred prayer, something cracks in, in the national, nationalistic perspective. And furthermore, when I demonstrate to these communities that what they cherished as a sacred prayer, in some times, in some cases, came from the opposing side, from the community across the wall, the melody 900 years ago may have came from the other camp and became a sacred prayer of this community and the people don't even know. Very few elders may know that truth. And then there's a real crack in their identity. I mean, how can it be if our sacred Jewish prayer is actually originally a Muslim prayer. Yeah, it did. I mean, it's it, a it shock. It rattles. The, it's a shock. Yeah, the head explodes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, then, and then the other way around. You know, I mean, there's many, many, many Christian quarters who have very spiritual beliefs and spiritual practices, but they completely neglect the historical link to Judaism and seeing the, 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 the continuation of the history and the connection or to, uh, from the Muslim uh, community, showing them the connection to the, the Hebrew roots of Islam. So with music, I can demonstrate it on a musical level without really uh, um, getting into uh, um, philosophical Yeah, the ideas. concepts of it. Yeah, because when you, when you approach people with words, you know, you and I are flexible and, and open enough to hear that. But people who have been, uh, they, they grew up, they were raised, they were taught that this is ours. And, and, and there's the enemy. And the enemy. The, the, right. Others, right. the others are, are lower or wrong or will be punished for their faith. Or, you know, they will go to hell and we will go to heaven. You know, you know about that? <laughs> 
up. And that's how we raise the children. That's how they, they teach the children. Right. So people grow to look at the world in the, the very segregated uh, point of view. It's not their fault. It, that's They've been doctrinated for many, many, many years. Yeah, from birth almost. That's and it's what been going for hundreds of years, right. for 2,000 years. Too much momentum. Yeah. <laughs> what a wait of 2,000 years of teaching segregation, of teaching uh, separation. Differences. Like, you, know, you use the word separation. Yeah, yeah. We, we've been teaching the children separation. So the, the teaching of unity, the mystical teaching of unities, have been always throughout the history, always hidden, suppressed by the mainstream, and always on the fringe. And in my opinion, that is the reason that we don't have peace, and we don't have unity. That's why we got to bring it to the mainstream. Right. That's the challenge of our generation. And I'm, I'm very involved with that through different foundations and different uh, organizations that I'm, I'm serving as an ad, advisory uh, board, uh, you know, they call it guiding voices or advisory board. And I'm trying to uh, push people to realize that we have to bring this teaching to the mainstream, to the urban centers, to the mainstream, to the public schools, to the somehow to find a way to bring it to the mainstream because it's it's never been in the mainstream. You know, maybe Gandhi is an example, but it's in a different culture. It's in India. Um, Imagine, imagine a Gandhi here in America who is taking, you know, Gandhi was the leader of his nation. Imag- imagine if the leader of our nation is leading in this direction, that we are one, that we have to teach our children that, that this is priority teaching. This is, this is essential. So <clears throat> this is all part of the work and the message that I try to bring, but I'm a musician. My research is in music. What I'm trying to do is to, to, to use what I know about the mystical musical tradition, the sacred musical tradition, to service the larger goal of bringing people together, bridging them. And as I said, in music, we can find examples that will, will really provide an example, a model, and an explanation for people why we are one, why we should work together. See, in the music, there's, there's the clues and there's scientific, uh, scientific studies that can show what is the making of a sound, for example. When you hear a note, you can measure you can measure how one musical note is made out of many other notes. So when we hear a note, we can actually hear more than one note. But our consciousness don't let us hear that there is this variety, this plurality. We think we hear one note. When, when you hit the piano, there's actually more than one note that you hear. And this is an, a metaphor to sing the whole reality. When you look at reality, when you look at people, you think each one is an individual, separated. You don't see that the other individual is part of you. You know what we'll do? I think in the second half, you know, while you were talking, you know, the sense I was getting was that we're really talking about energy and vibration. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we'll get into that in the second half because I think that if you're coming from that place of what I would call the infinite, the experience of the infinite and the inclusive, your music will feel that. And people, whatever you're saying, your know, music has a tendency, the ability to do that. Yes. You know, to bring people right. into that experience. You know what I mean? Without yes. any idea of it. So right. it's, even, it's even expanded that way. So why don't you set the set for it? We're going to uh, watch the, the roomy part of the video yes. with the whirling dervish. So yes, yes. The, this is coming from the Turkish... Mevlavi Sufi tradition. It's, it's a mystical Islamic tradition that comes from Rumi, uh, the great mystic poet that lived 700 years ago. And he established this tradition of ritual, of movement, turning around one's heart. And through that turning, this movement, you meditate and you pray and you t- try to reach this sensation 
of oneness of all things through the movement and the music of course the the music that that goes along with that uh, of course drives the dervish to reach that goal of becoming one so that that is what we're doing in that and video. that was you, you did that at the uh, the world music festival yes and, and the video was by misha hedges yes yes, yes. He, he filmed that in the world f uh, world festival of second music in los angeles it, it was filmed at the scarable center in 2008 and the music is uh, a traditional uh, tr turkish sufi music Okay, so you're going to see that video. It's magnificent. Just settle in, enjoy, feel the experience of love and oneness. Enjoy. We would like to dedicate this next song to our old ancient friend and teacher, the man who I do yoga three times a week, the man that uh, people in the Western world now spend their lunchtime. People wake up with him, they go to bed with him. It's an, our old friend, Jalaluddin Rumi.
Hi everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video, Yuval, Seeker of Truth. And the incredible photograph you see in between Yuval and I is Torch of God, uh, John Longbreak. Uh, he's from Prescott Valley, Arizona. It's a photograph. Uh, John literally travels all over the world spreading the torch of God. I mean, that's really his, his goal, his intention, an incredible being. And again, anybody who wants to join us for the Healing Art Project as part of the acupuncture, as part of the healing the heart of the planet, please, the more people involved, the more people vibrating that energy of bridging heaven and earth with that intention, the better the healing. So anybody's welcome to join us. And if you want to be inspired, go to heaventoearthart.com, heaven to earthart.com. Okay, so we were talking at the end of the last session about the vibration of music mm -hmm. and the ability of that bright vibration to bring people into experience of love and oneness. Why don't you talk to that? Yes. See, when we look at the world, we see variety. We see differences. We see how some people have darker colors of skin. Some people have pale skin. Some people have these kind of eyes, some people have other shape of eyes, and we tend to put barriers because we see the differences and we perceive that we are individuals separated from each other and each one has a different race and a different religion and we see the differences instead of seeing the oneness. Now, in, in the mystical Sufi tradition, there, there's a certain uh, connection to a very important teaching in the Quran, a, a line in the Quran that every Muslim has to know, that God created the differences, meaning God created men, human beings, in various different races and different shapes on purpose. And the purpose is that we will love each other. And it, literally it says that we will know each other. Now in biblical language, in, in ancient time, the word to know each other uh, was used as a code word for love each other. Which, so if you read in the Bible and says, uh, you know, and, and King David knew his, uh, his made beloved. his beloved. He knew right. his beloved. That means they they yeah, made they, they love made love. Them. They right. made love to each other. So so the, the the whole idea of knowing somebody deeply is through loving them, and. So the, the reason, according to that mystical teaching from, from Sufism and from Islam, is that the whole purpose of having variety in the world is in order for us to reach out and to know and to love each other. And through that love and this knowledge of knowing each other, we're going to create the unity. And that is the challenge of life. That's the we're purpose. We're going to recognize the unity. We're going to recognize the unity. Right, because it's already... The, right, right. And the problem is we, don't, we do not know the other. We do not know deeply their history. If we would, if we would know the, the, the whole context of the culture and the history of the other, we would have more love. We would have more Even appreciation. Even more so if we knew our root. And our root as well, yes. I mean, we'd realize yeah. there's one root. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> that, would, right. that would cut to the chase a lot. Right. So the, from the Greeks, the Greeks always said, you know, the first thing is thou yourself. The, know yourself right. is the first wisdom. It's the, f it's the basic fundamental wisdom is to know yourself, meaning to know where you came from, who you are, what's your history. But not just the last 20 years, last 120 years, but the last thousands of years, where you came from. And then you have wisdom if you know yourself. So you start with knowing yourself and then you have to know the other as, as well and then you have a chance for having that love and knowledge. And in music, there is some interesting scientific mathematical relationships within music that can teach us about this issue of oneness versus variety. Because or separation. The, or separation. Right. Because the challenge is that we, we are born into life with a perspective that we are all separated and there's variety. We don't see the oneness. We see the variety. So in music... Well, the variety yeah, takes yes. on a, a greater consequence. There, is, there are a right. lot of flowers in the garden, right. but not one is better than the other. Right, right, right. 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 And, if, and if you see, if you look at the flowers and you just see them as separate pieces of colors, 
and you don't see the earth that is connecting all of them, they're all connected to one nurturing earth, then you don't see the essential part, the fundamental part of the of the picture, of the reality. Mm. So uh, in music, there's some important relationship of sound and between sounds. And just to be brief about it, without getting too deep into music theory, I'll describe it like that. In, in every musical scale, in every musical mode, um, there's the basic note, which we call the one, which is the first note of the scale. The note that all notes of the scale wants to lead back to. That is, we call it the one. Now, through science, and the Greeks discovered it 2,000 years ago. Pythagoras, the Greek scientist and a musician, Pythagoras, discovered that in the first note of the scale, the first note has higher vibrations that ring very, very, very softly. Our brain perceives it, but we do not consciously say to ourselves, oh, I hear, I hear the, the, the first note on the piano, and I also hear, I hear the other notes of the scale vibrating up, meaning within the one note, there are hidden vibrations of the other notes. That's the one, and the others, the other notes are the variety. But the variety is within the oneness, the oneness. And we do not consciously aware that that one note have all the other vibrations. But in a, in a lab, you can take a sound, and with a computer, you can take out the higher vibrations. You can filter it out. We call it filtering. You can basically... S- with, with, with a computer, you can, you can block the vibrations, the high vibrations, and we can really realize what happens. And I'll demonstrate it to you. If you take a note, mm-hmm. yes, if you, take, if you take a note and you block the higher vibrations, you get something like this. If the voice, the, the, my voice, for example, if, I, if I'm going to make a, a, a tone, an ah, I'm going to say ah, if I would cut the higher vibrations, it's going to sound like this. Ah, basically, it's like doing a hum with your mouth closed. Mm, that's the sound without the higher vibrations. Mm, and with the higher vibration that naturally occur, the natural phenomena of each sound that it has the higher vibration, it is ah versus um. So what happens? We had a bright sound. This is bright. Ah, and then um, it becomes dark. It becomes dull. It becomes muted. So when we filter all the ver- variations of life, the colors of life, the higher vibrations that are all the rest of the notes of the scale, all. In, in metaphor, it's like all of our neighbors, all of the others. If you filter them out from the one, from who you are, you think you are, if you filter them out, you Your end up... Your life is dull. You ending up dull. being dull, muted. So, and this is scientific tests. I mean, this is science. This is mathematic, mathematics. You can prove it. You can... You can show it to every kid, every adult. You can show it to them. This is not poetry or philosoph- philosophical idea. This is real natural phenomena that if we cut the variety, if we take out the others, we remain muted, dull. So, so when you're either composing or playing this bridge yeah. music, yeah. I mean... Yeah. Your intention is to be that bridge. Your intention is yes. to, to vibrate mm-hmm. inclusion, mm-hmm. not separation. Your right. intention right. is to vibrate the infinite. Mm-hmm. And when people t- together, your ensemble, mm-hmm. are all coming together to, to put that, to perpetuate that, mm-hmm. to manifest that, that can bring the audience into it because that's yes. vibrationally, energetically. Why don't you talk about yeah. that? Well, it's amazing what's happening in the concerts. I mean, we've been doing it now for 11 years all over the world. We've been in Morocco, in, in Palestine, in Israel, in, in Poland, in Korea. I mean, 
across various different cultural barriers, all over the, U- the U.S., in Mexico, many, many different cultures and many different audiences experienced what we do. And everywhere, the same thing happens. The, the audience comes into the concert as individuals. And you see that. I mean, you can see people who know each other, who came together, they look at each other and they speak and they smile. And they do not smile and do, do, they do not look in the eye of other people who came in to the concert who are others. They don't right. know them. And people have this separation. They sit there as individuals and they watch the show. And through the concert, through what we do and, and the music that we do, and the music melts the heart, the music melts the barriers, the music and the stories and the, and the vibrations and the unity that we try to create on stage affect the audience. And, and the, the result, at the end of the concert, the audience very often stays in the lobby. People don't want to go home. Right, to, to the separation. Again. Exactly. They want to linger. Right. It's amazing. It feels better to feel Yeah, old. and theater, theaters don't know what to do. Sometimes they have to really kick people out because people just want to stay. And we always make ourselves available in the lobby to meet the, the audience. In every concert, no matter how large, we always go to the lobby. We don't stay in the green room, in the changing room. We want to go and meet the audience after the show. And I see strangers... Now, hugging each other, hugging each other right. laughing, smiling, looking at each other, talking to each other, com- becoming a community for a very short time, for an hour after the show. And they hate to go home because they go home to back to their this separation experience, the, the experience of individuality. And the music and that experience, specific kind of music, specific kind of, of stories and teaching and poetry, Bring them to that experience of unity, and that's that's is the and most you know, beautiful makes, thing. Yeah, about it. You know, it's amazing we're coming to the end of the show, but I think people really got a feel for you know your your mm-hmm. service, and that's what's really beautiful. So, if you want any information about Uval, the videos, the art project, Alan eight zero five six eight seven two zero five three eight zero five six eight seven two zero five three. Good night. We love you. God bless you. Thank you.